Alrighty, hosses, so welcome back, and let's just go ahead and recap what we did so far. So, so far, we built an interactive prompt that we could type in our own custom commands list, and then, of course, we added the ability for clients to connect, and then whenever they did connect, if we type list again, we can see their connections, and in the last video, what we did is once we have a list of connections, we can actually select... A computer from that list using its ID number so we say select zero hit enter and it says we are now connected to that computer and it doesn't say turtle anymore it actually gives us a new indicator of their IP address so we are now pretty much remotely connected to whatever targets computer we want and from here we can just write anything we want echo tuna and those commands run on that computer. And also what I did is I set it up where after you throw in your commands, um, the interactive prompt changes from their IP address to uh, the current working directory. So now if I wanna you know, move back and you know, uh, I don't know, what can I do? DIR, then there you go. So just like before, that's what we're gonna do. So again, in this tutorial, we took care of all this stuff, the selecting thing, and now we want to be able to actually send commands to that target. So close out of this, close out of that, bada bing, bada boom, mm mm mm. Thought I could uh, find something to rhyme, but whatever, all right. So connect uh, with remote target client. And I'll just write uh, define send target commands and we actually need to pass in our connection object right here and check this out I'll show you guys where we call this alright so whenever we're in our interactive prompt what we can do is we can type in list to see all the computers that are connected or if they or if we I guess I should say type in select and then we select one of the computers then it's gonna get that connection and then we're gonna call this function that we're gonna be programming in this tutorial with that connection. So at this point, like I said, we're connected to one target, the target that we wanna send whatever commands to. So I'm gonna write while true, because remember, I think I, all right. So we're gonna add another loop that's gonna be an infinite loop, and this is gonna be the loop that says what command do you wanna send, what command do you wanna send. So that is why we aren't in turtle anymore. We are in this little interactive prompt that's connected to their computer. And now if you're like, all right, what if you want to disconnect from them? And what if you actually want to get back to look at turtle and see all the clients that are connected? Well, we can add a special keyword like quit. So basically any of these commands are gonna run just like you were typing them on their computer. But whenever we type quit, we'll hop out of the loop, we'll break the loop and it'll put us back in turtle. Cool? Cool. All right. So while true, what I want to do is just listen for commands. So we'll say input. And then this is just remember, this is just whatever we are typing that we want, you know, pretty much their computer to run. So I actually want to add an if statement. So I'm going to add a length string encode command and greater than zero. And I'm not going to really uh, explain this because I did it. This is pretty much the same as um, the first part of this tutorial, ser tutorial series when you're just controlling another computer. So this part isn't really uh, any different. So once we have that, I'm just going to take that connection and send them whatever we typed. So str encode command. So if our command equals echo hey then it's just gonna take that and send it to their computer. So now what I wanna do is I wanna get the response. Basically after they ran the command, what was the output of it? And I just wanna store it in the variable client response. So connection received and the buffer size can be 2480, that's plenty of space in UTF-8. Now remember, the reason that we have to do all this encoding 
in decoding is because whenever we send it across the network, it's in bytes, ones and zeros. And whenever we get it back, we want to convert it to a string because humans aren't very good at reading ones and zeros. So now we can just print out client response and just want to end this with a blank line. Now, another thing I want to point out is what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up that part of their response is their current working directory. So let's see if I have this. So you see that whatever we got back, this was the actual results. Here, let me show you. So this was the actual results of the command, such as echo tuna. And part of the response after this on a new line was their current working directory. That is when whenever I typed a command like this, this didn't have any output, but we still got back their current working directory. So all of that takes place on the other script, the client script, but there you go. So after this, actually what I want to do is this. I'm going to test for one more thing, and that is if the command is equal equal to quit, then we're just going to break out of the loop. So remember, this loop right here, all it does is it loops forever and ever and ever, and it just looks at whatever you typed in, and then it sends it off to their machine. But we just don't want to do it a fixed amount of times. Maybe you want to do it once, maybe you want to do it 50. Well, it's just going to look at all those commands and do it normally, but whenever you type in quit, it's going to break out of this loop, and then whenever this loop breaks, then this loop can continue your turtle because right now whenever you're connected to another computer it's hanging right here and it's not iterating through turtle so there you go kind of uh tricky but whenever you like look at the full source code it's going to make a lot of sense so this pretty much means break or quit your connection from that specific machine and i also want to do some exception handling so except and if you guys are like, why would we have an error right here? Well, one reason is whenever you're connected to another computer, you can start sending it commands, um, maybe echo, hey, move directories, look, you know, maybe edit some files, add some files. And then if they ever shut off their computer or log out or whatever, then you may get an error thrown. So what you can do is you can just print out connection was lost. And then we also want to break the connection that way. So there are two different ways that we're going to have our connection broken with another computer. The first way is if we decide to break it by typing the keyword quit. The second way is if they break it somehow. Maybe there's a hiccup in the network or maybe they shut off their computer, whatever. So in that instance, we're going to say connection was lost and then it's just going to put us right back in turtle. So there you go. Um, pretty much this right here this is the stuff that's going to go in thread two so thread two is taken care of so remember we said thread one which is handling all the connections is taken care of thread two which is actually interacting with another computer is taken care of now we actually have to build those threads real quick say which part of the program we want to run in each thread and then we can just run the script it's going to be awesome so i'll see you guys in the next video